Welcome to today's webinar and learning about some interesting, fun recipe organizing apps. Well, to start us off with what they are, recipe organizing apps, as well as storing apps, are some virtual uh, cookbooks on the go where you can keep them on your person at all times. If anyone's in the need for finding some new recipes, here's a couple great go-to places. You're able to input your favorites and manage them all. And you can even save handwritten recipes without having to be typing all of them out individually. And of course, there are some free and others in which you'll find have a small one-time fee. So one of them will start off with introducing Recipe Keeper. Uh, Recipe Keeper, as you'll see, is one of the free apps. This helps you record and keep track of all your recipes and even find new ones. Uh, to go over it a bit, you start off by downloading the app, which is available on any device. Upload the existing recipes by either typing them in or scanning them whichever you'd prefer. And then go ahead and edit your recipes by adding in prep time, as well as cook time, serving size, and lastly, a picture. Then add your recipe into a category. Now, uh, some of the main features, this app lets you plan meals ahead of time. And this comes in handy as it plans the week or even a whole month ahead. Then you can also adjust the serving size, which will also change your shopping list and recipe. Uh, that is until you change it back. Uh, there's also a shopping list for groceries. So when you add a meal to your grocery list, all the ingredients will automatically be added to your list. And you can also print your shopping list and meal plan off of the application. Some others are uh, not only can you enter in your own recipes, but you can also import some recipes from websites you find on the internet or from books. And you can also connect Recipe Keeper onto Amazon Echo, as you can see over here, uh, as a kitchen helper. So this would add your recipes while you're cooking or you know, if you're in the need for some help, you can go ahead and ask. You can also share your recipes on social media like Facebook or by email if you'd like. Edit and change the layout with a color scheme to make it easier to look through. There's also a dark mode if it helps with brightness changes. Uh, there's also a timer to set alarms for food and other baking items or even setting multiple timers at a time for different things. Now, in terms of pricing, although uh, Recipe Keeper is free and has multiple features, there is a Recipe Keeper Pro that costs $10.99 for a membership. This comes with additional perks like unlimited recipes and the ability to use the app on more than one device and syncing recipes rather than having to input in different devices with one account. Uh, now on to another called Paprika Recipe Manager. Now what this is, is an app that helps you organize a variety of recipes and make some meal plans and even create your own grocery list as the other and setting a whole bunch of different ingredients and converting them into a list. Uh, you can use the app's built-in web browser to find thousands of recipes for all skill levels, to, from simple dishes to some more of the complex meals. Now, when you spot a recipe you like, simply save it with a simple tap. And if you install Paprika on multiple devices, the app will sync all your data to your phone as well as computer and other tablets you've signed in with. Some of the main features for Paprika are being able to edit uh, your downloaded recipes and even interact with them while cooking by crossing off items as you go along and even highlighting current steps. You can also add images and insert text 
Uh, your phone screen won't dim, which is a good feature when it comes to needing to multitask and be looking back and forth, no needing to tap onto your screen to keep it lit up. So you won't need to worry about having to unlock your phone in the midst of cooking. It also gives you the tools to plan meals and create organized shopping lists, start a couple timers and notifications, and even convert measurements. Now on Android, you will find uh, the free version, a free download on Google Play Store, but on the iOS, it costs $4.99 on the App Store. On Windows, there is a free trial to go through, but then it will um, present a cost of $20. And on a Mac App Store, $30. And now for another big oven, uh, you can create a free account to start searching and saving up some recipes. Now you can also search up specific meals by typing what you're craving into the search bar and browse through over 350,000 available recipes made by home cooks. And use the recipe scanner to take pictures of family recipes and import them into the app, as you can see these would be one of the pictures provided. You're able to scroll through if any other person has added additional photos, either from the internet or taken on from their own style of cooking. Uh, some of their main features are uh, an option to follow friends and family and other cooks that use the app to see what they're making and get some cooking inspiration from their dishes or techniques. Uh, the app also helps you create meals out of leftover ingredients and coordinate your shopping list with other family members and including the option to plan meals. Now, how to access Big Oven. The app is free for Android on Google Play Store and iOS in the App Store. And you can also access the website online using this hyperlink or if the link is provided in the chat, you can go ahead and try that. But aside from that, there are some alternative recipe storing apps. This includes Yumly, All Recipes Dinner Spinner, BBC Good Food, Tasty, Forks Over Knives, and many more. And now on to a live demo. Okay, now for our live demonstration, we can go ahead by starting off downloading the app. So go ahead, open your app store. This is on an iOS as well. So similar steps onto Google Play. Um, go ahead and type in, uh, this is for Recipe Keeper. So we will be heading over to that and it will be this link with the logo we've gone over about that and the short, simple name. Uh, because I already have the app downloaded, I'll just go ahead and open from here rather than having to download it all over again. <laughs> Uh, now the app first opens with a quick introduction, so if you would like to read more through it later on, but all in all, this is really just a summary of what we've already gone through, so we can go ahead and get started. We start off in the homepage, as you can see here, with a few different additions on the bottom. We got the shopping list, which we'll create in a bit, some planners, as we mentioned earlier to add in some meals, cookbooks that we'll be able to create on our own or gather our ingredients and later create a list and so on and so forth. But onto the homepage, one of the great things about this app is already providing some simple dishes. As you can see here, we're provided with breakfast, some desserts, main dishes, and snacks. And then we also have the all option, which puts all courses into its own specific category. So as you can see here, instead of snack, we have it put under cookies. Similar things onto that. So if you'd like to uh, go into another feature, we have the plus sign over here in the, uh, located on the top right corner, where we can go ahead and see, we can add in recipes of our own import from a website, scan from a photo, or from a PDF. As mentioned earlier, this would, these two would usually be um, 
the ones from adding automatically rather than having to input manually and adding our own recipe. So we can try adding from a photo. This would be, I'll go ahead and from the internet and search in um, a cheeseburger, for example. Ingredients. And here we got a variety of uh, websites that we can look through, as you'll see here, two pounds of freshly ground chuck, or we can head over to images, see what's provided. And for instance, we have here each of the ingredients put out together. So if I'd like to use this for an example into photos, I can go ahead and add two photos. I'll switch back into the app. And between these options, I would select recipe from photo. And now uh, a good part of this, it provides instructions of its own, or you can just go ahead and follow these. You can select photo from down here, choose the photo, and you'll find the one that we've already selected and saved will be provided. And then it will tell you to resize this little box to show all the names of the ingredients per se. So I'll just go ahead and show all ingredients with the names. And now I can scan the selection to title itself, its serving size, what it would seem, prep time, so on and so forth. But for this occasion, I will choose ingredients to do on its own. As it scans, you'll be able to see basically what was input from the image onto itself. Now, rather than having to type it on my own, it's already put. But if I do see something missing, I could just enter it in as well. Now, once I click select, I'll be able to see over in these options, anything that was added. So under ingredients, I'll be able to find what was added. And now directions, I can say, uh, start by cooking. And then I can look through more of the options, anything I find with serving size, calories, I'll enter in it for future rep references. And then for photos, or I can also choose a different photo and then replace it with another or use the same one if I'd like. So for instance, I'll choose that, add a photo. I'll add the photo and I'll, I have the option to remove another or move down. This would simply add the top photo first as it's like main thing, main profile, if you'd like cheeseburger, this would go under main dish of a category. This would fall under, I believe both bread and beef or if you'd like to add a category of its own, I can put in a dish, for instance, and now you'll find that it's been added to the list of categories. Now I can go ahead and save. And as you can see, it's been adjusted to the ingredients, the directions I've listed, and the photos that started with the main one I put as a profile to um, show what it is. And the second one, which includes the original ingredients. Now under main dish, we can see that we've added this burger. And if we head over to all, as previously mentioned, instead of going under main dish, it's just been categorized as what I've named it previously. If I'd like to manually add a dish, I can go ahead back into the plus sign, add a new recipe. Uh, for this instance, I will be introducing one of my grandma's famous dishes is traditional Mexican dish called chilaquiles if anyone has tried it if not whoa you have to try it <laughs> but this is a traditional breakfast dish so I will quickly just go ahead and select the course of breakfast and put it under dish for instance, now that we've already created a new category, because we don't have any collections at the moment, we'll leave this blank. Sources, homemade dish. And we have a household of eight people. So I'll go ahead and say eight for a serving size, eight people. And the prep time usually uh, depends on who is 
um, making it. So because we make it from scratch, it does take m more time. But if you're starting off with buying, say, the main course of the dish is tortillas, um, tortillas, you cut it. But if you buy them already pre-cooked and crispy, it wouldn't take as much prep time. And for cook time, I'll also put the same a good 30 minutes. And this, if I could put 10 stars, you know. <laughs> but to start off with ingredients, I'll, I'll try starting from order. So we do start with the tortillas once again. Um, the canola oil is what we use, um, but you can use whichever oil we do, uh, depending on the day, what we have, either canola oil or corn oil, but really it's just about preference. Um, then to be precise, one garlic, uh, two to three tomatoes, mm, two California chiles, and cumin powder or if you'd like uh grinded cumin but it's really the same but one is more uh start from the scratch if you will you know and some salt usually this is just really a pinch of salt and now for directions as we previously saw with the pancakes which was provided within the app uh they did number styles but if you have a direction and it's pretty straightforward, you can go ahead and do it without numbers. But because this is pretty precise, I'll put in starting with uh, cutting the tortillas. Um, but this really, again, if you're starting from scratch. Um, and now, just to, this would be to fry the tortillas. Uh, in the oil until it looks crispy. Now for the third step, you'd be draining the oil. Uh, some you'll find that one direction will be continued while another is being added at the same time. So for this one, I will say you'll be boiling the tomatoes, one of the ingredients mentioned earlier, and the California chiles at the same time. So I will put both directions on the same number, then blend with the cumin powder and the garlic, as well as the, I'll say some salt. You can do a pinch of salt if you'd like. And while this is happening, it will be another. So you can begin boiling, blending ingredients. <laughs> and then the next one will be, once the ingredients are mixed, pour into the hot oil previously made. Once boiling, uh, turn the stove off, of course, I'd hope you turn it off, and pour the mixture, which is the salsa we're making to begin with, um, onto the crispy tortilla. <laughs> I'll actually take off eight because this is optional, I'll actually men mention it, but recommended toppings, of course, be added after the dish is cooked and all that, so this would be sour cream, uh, Mexican cheese, uh, spicy salsa, sure, and some chopped, oops, chopped onions. And for our last step, you know, enjoy, because of course. And nutrition, it is different. If I'd like to add serving size, calories, I'm actually not sure because, again, this is from scratch and I have no idea. <laughs> So I will add real quick um, Mexican chilaquiles for a quick picture. Find this one is most similar actually, representing what is cooked. As you can see here, we have the salsa that we're making, the chilaquiles, with the cooked crispy looking tortillas.
So we can go ahead and add a photo, save. And now the photo we've got with the ratings we've already created, as well as the homemade uh, serving size, prep time, cook time, the ingredients we've added. Here you can see it's bolded into what's the measurements to be precise. Serving size, once again, photos. And if you'd like to add onto your favorites or pin onto your screen, down here in these bars we have, while I'm here, I'll also mention that you can change the size if it helps. You can add with this little star located in the bottom of your screen, it'll add to your favorites and these little three lines. If you'd like to pin to your home screen to make it easier to locate for future references, it would also be a good thing. You also have the convert measurements as mentioned earlier or cookbook. And adding on to groceries, this would be one of your grocery lists. You can always add some more or um, uncheck, meaning you've already picked them up. And the meal plan. And here, what, what we see adding a meal plan onto different days. So for Friday, I'd like to have a, a breakfast of chilaquiles for two people. And what this does is changes the serving size by quite a bit, just to be precise. Now onto our homepage, you can see that the dish that we've pinned is now on here. And in our overall categories, we have favorites and the chilaquiles have been saved. Also, now that I'm here, one of the previous mention that I said is already provided within the app is pancakes. Um, over here, you see that it's already been provided quite a bit with three cups of all-purpose flour. If you look over here on the serving size, if you adjust to, say, instead of uh, eight people, you'd like to uh, serve a size of 10, the ingredients automatically change to how it would be for a size serving of 10 people or 10 pancakes per se, rather than just the previous mentioned as eight. As you can see, every time I change it, all the ingredients will change to a precise measurement. And yeah, over on settings, the color scheme mentioned earlier really just um, changes with color coordination, I believe. So if you look back, instead of the orange, it's now purple. <laughs> And if you'd like to sync in your um, meal planners across your devices, any of your data that you'd like saved, this will require the pro version as mentioned earlier. And as well as the, oh, the dark mode I mentioned, which is usually for, um, this usually really helps with brightness and all that, but it's preference at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, actually, that's it.